Hey everybody, it's Nick Inman, founder of VolumeProfileTrader.com, and this is the weekend update on October 12th, and what we're looking at here is a market that continues to roll over. If you recall last weekend, on the 5th, well, the 5th was a Friday, uh, I, I was saying, watch out, markets are going to pull back, we're topping out here, and we're looking for some type of pullback. So... Sure enough, the markets do just that, and what you're seeing here is a rotation out of equities and into cash. So it's just something that you want to be aware of. It's, you know, after the third quarter, now we look for the fourth quarter, now earnings are coming out, uh, you have the election. So big money is taking profits and realizing that the risk-reward to be long isn't there anymore and so simply they're exchanging their stock for cash and they're either you know getting on the short side or they're waiting for an opportunity a pullback to really get back into the market most notably I said that the Nasdaq is going to be the one to roll over uh, earlier this week I initial well, last Friday I initiated a put spread on the queues that ended up being profitable for about 175 percent gain so it was a, it was a really good trade but the point was I, I took advantage of what the market was giving me the market was rolling over and I you know took advantage of it I got short via put spreads and I profited nicely from them uh, with big gains on uh, options now you have to be looking for some type of of support level here on the NASDAQ on this on stocks in general you're not saying that the markets you know are going to bounce and we're going to go to new highs I'm not trying to say that what I'm trying to say is the market you know the market goes up the market goes down we're probably at that stage where the market's going to bounce and just here on the NASDAQ and I'm looking at volume here uh, we're at the bottom of this high volume area and it's probably likely for you know good for a bounce and if you want to zoom into a monthly profile I would say being at the bottom of this value area low from August we've done a nice little retracement here you can see in August the point of control formed at the top of the range and we we pushed through that we made new highs and then all of a sudden the point of control again the following month finished at the top end of the range but what was different between August and September once that point of control formed in September we had a huge sell-off and you know a little bounce after that after that but it was different from what happened in August where we just traded sideways we had a little bit of a dip uh, here in August or in the start of September but we regained those levels and as I scoot over, you can see we blasted off of those levels, came back, found support at those levels, and uh, continued to move higher. So once we rejected from those levels, the retest, and this is the big thing, the retest in the following month, this was your shorting opportunity, selling against the prior month's point of control in a situation like this where it's retesting versus being support and that was the trade that's how I got in on Friday and sure enough it ended up being a great trade now that we're at the bottom end of this value area uh, level I would suspect that there's a chance that we could bounce from these levels now I wouldn't put too much into it because the ceiling you have the 50-day moving average the 20-day moving average and the 90-day point of control all at this call it 2770 level and I would be looking for some type of resistance there. I'd be looking for the sellers to sell into strength. And, I'm, yeah, sellers to sell into strength. So I would still be cautious, you know, be cautious about what's going on. Uh, use the strength probably to scale down a bit. Uh, now looking at the Dow, I, I get a different picture. If we're looking to be 
buyers of the market, this 13,100 level, the point of control for the year, that should be a great level to look to get long, a great level to look for a bounce. So uh, that's one thing to be aware of. Uh, the Dow has outperformed, underperformed to the downside, so it's gone down less than, say, the NASDAQ. So I would really be looking to get into those high-quality blue-chip names on some type of market bounce here off of the point of control for the year. We're pretty close. We're about 1% away. So if you feel the urge to start nibbling, you know, these are bad levels. Uh, just to show you the – wow, I've got a lot of lines on here. All right. Just to show you the levels that we're looking at on a monthly scale – uh, we kind of broke down from this uh, point of, or I'm sorry, the bottom of this high volume area from last month. I would consider that broken. Uh, so I'm looking down last month, or I'm sorry, August point of control. Uh, it's also this gap fill all around 13,100. That would be the, the level that I'm looking at for some type of bounce. And the Russell, now this looks weak. This looks like the Dow except for it's breaking down. So uh, now one thing, it's pretty light volume the last couple of days, so just keep that in mind. Uh, however, and I guess we're coming down to what was resistance. Now it should be some type of support, right? Well, I would just stay away from st small caps. Stick with the blue chips if you're going to look to buy the weakness and uh, kind of go from there. Um, the transports uh, continue to be weak. They continue to roll over. Uh, I would stay away from this uh, also. Volatility index on Friday, on Friday the 5th, back down to the bottom end of the range, saying just realize where it is, and we're testing it for now a third time. This looks like it wants to go higher. And a great way to look at that is using uh, basically the uh, the average price, the mean uh, for these month monthly uh, profiles for the VIX. So you can see back in uh, September, uh, uh, I'm sorry, August, September, uh, this 16 level, let me delete this, this 16 level was very important level. Now in October, this 15, 20 level is finding a little bit of support here. So if we get above 16 with any emphasis and put, push towards 17, we're going to 19. We're going to these swing highs from, it looks like this was August, but this is the uh, mean for, uh, or I guess you could say the 50% for uh, the last three months. And just to show you. Twenty-four, twenty-seven. So you can see it's right around um, the 50% retracement. And that's kind of what you're looking for for a potential target. So if we hold 1520, uh, we look at 1625 or so on the VIX. If we get above that and push above these swing highs, we're going from 17 to 19. Uh, I'm pretty confident about that, uh, which probably leads to a market that pushes down to around 1400. And this, that was the level that we were originally targeting. Um, it's the value area high for the year. It's where the big volume is. That's where, you know, as, as a trader or as a, a longer time frame uh, trader or investor, those are the kind of levels that you're looking at to get involved in the market. Um, the dollar continues to trade around this high volume area here. We're holding it, uh, selling from the top end of the range. The bottom of the range is buying I can't really say one way or the other which way the dollar's going to go. Actually, from a monthly uh, profile standpoint, let me get rid of these. From a monthly standpoint, uh, you know, it's an inside month on the dollar. Uh, we're, I guess you could say, holding the point of control for the year, though I wouldn't put too much emphasis into it. Uh, just be watching these swing lows, and if, if we continue to hold them, make higher lows, then there's a chance that, you know, we break out of this little channel, push up towards, you know, 81 or so. There's that chance. Uh, however, this high volume area here, it's it's probably going to hold unless if something outrageous happens. So just keep an eye on it is all I can say. 
Uh, similarly with the euro right now, the trade is consolidation, actually. Um, all right, let me get the right tool. So these lows are holding, but what's happening here on the highs? We're getting lower highs here. So this could either mean maybe we get a continuation pattern. This is just, you know, a multi-week bull flag, and we're going to push back up towards 131.45 and uh, go see year-to-date highs. There is that possibility. I'm just not a part of that. I, you know, that's just not my trade. And I would, from a day trading standpoint, there are opportunities on the euro. But for longer-term swing trades, it's just not not my thing, and I'm going to stay away from it. Uh, gold doing what it's supposed to do, selling off from year-to-date highs, and that's what you should expect. Pretty uh, lower than average volume. If you're just looking at, you know, the last 21 days, if you want to look at the last, call it 50 days, bear with me, last 50 days, then we're about average. Um, you know, markets go up, markets go down. What I would be looking for on gold, I'm going to zoom out a little bit, two year, two day, how about that? Okay, if this, if this top of the range holds, we could easily call it a 50% retracement. Nothing would be wrong with that. Uh, maybe 1700 just keep it in mind and uh, realize that the market, any market, doesn't go up in a straight line unless if you're seeing something like this. But you can see after something like this, this move, this vertical move, what do we do? Well, for a year or more than that, I don't, you know, whatever, we consolidated. We traded sideways, then eventually we broke out again. So... What I would like to see for gold is a nice consolidation, give it some time to work its way out, and then let's see. It's probably going to stay pretty stagnant until uh, the elections, I would have to guess. Silver, uh, just keep an eye on this. We, we want to see these levels hold. If they don't, I think you want to scale down on your silver position. We had the point of control. Let's see uh, on a one-year chart. Okay. We had the point of control down here. Now it's shifted back up to these levels. That could mean a potential top and a potential rollover. So I just want to keep that in mind. And I don't want you to be long, you know, over long silver. Actually, I scaled down from mine earlier this week and uh, just realized that it's not right to be uh, extra long silver, I guess you could say. Overweight silver is what I was going for. Uh, so just keep it in mind. Oil, uh, still balancing, holding the value area low for the year. Let me get rid of these drawings. Uh, just keep that in mind. Let me hold some. All right. Monthlies. All right. This is why this is so cool. Uh, back in July, look at how we come back and retest these levels we're holding. Now, we are uh, basically, I'm gonna just going to look at the value area low for last month. We're holding those levels. If we hold the, those levels and we get above uh, 90, let's call it 93, with any type of volume, I would suspect that oil is going to try to make a push back towards high 90s. Uh, 97 or so would be a, a pretty good target, I think. It's just one of those things where I, I think over the long term, I s still believe oil is going to be one of those commodities that are gonna, going to be going higher in price, and that's just maybe it's just the reason the fact that the dollar is trying to go lower you know whatever the case may be I just I think overall when oil has these big sells like we saw in the summer it's just one of those opportunities where you want to be a buyer and that's just how I feel and whether this value area low holds or not you know I you know go back zoom in watch these levels uh, you'd be surprised how amazing they are and how accurate they are. Uh, just kind of pointing that out. So uh, copper looks like this is on a sell, and you could see a pullback uh, as as far as 350 or so on copper. So just keep that in mind, just to pull up Freeport. You know, the point of control for the year on Freeport is below us, which is a good thing from a buying standpoint, uh, but. I think this may be something that you can look to sell into strength. Earnings are coming out uh, next week, so just be careful. But uh, 
you know, copper looks pretty weak. The actual copper futures contract. All right, now I'm going to go into all of the uh, sector ETFs, just run, them, run down, see where we're going here, see what we, we want to look to do. Um, XLE, uh, main new, new highs. Now we just continue to drag lower. The point of control for the year on XLE is 71. Uh, 25. I wouldn't put too much emphasis on that just because uh, those levels won't be as accurate as say a stock or a, an, an index ETF or a futures contract uh, but we should be coming down to a support level so keep it in mind energy is probably something that you want to be looking to buy on weakness uh, go through your charts go through energy see what is still constructive um, you know technically Keep an eye on the earnings, and you know if you see an opportunity, take it. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with buying weakness on something that's that's trying to move higher. Uh, utilities, you know, is selling off from the highs. However, is this something that you want to buy on weakness? I, I think it is, and the bottom of your range is kind of like 36. These swing lows here, uh, just keep it in mind. Could pull back a little more. So utilities maybe have a little more of a pullback before you can start looking to get long. XLF, this is actually something that I would stay away from for a little bit. Financials have done really well, and maybe a lot's baked into the financials right now. And you want to put yourself in a position where you're managing risk versus just buying, buying blindly. Now 1570 or so, I would keep an eye on that level. That's a big volume chunk. Um, Let's actually zoom into monthly profiles. Um, yeah, 15.70, that, that was last month's point of control. 50-day moving average is trying to creep up there. Just keep an eye on it. Right now we are in inside month on uh, the XLF, you know, however you want to draw it. That's the lows from our, well, the, the consolidation lows from last month. Uh, we're making lower highs. I, I just keep an eye on it. That's all. Industrials, sideways consolidation, this kind of, I don't even really put, pay much attention to head and shoulder patterns, but, you know, it's kind of hard not to look at this because it's the first thing that popped out. Okay, so this could pull back. The, you know, this is something serious that you need to be aware of, and the point of control for the year is above us. So, uh, value area low for the year, 35 it's not out of the question, and that's just something to be aware of. XLK continues to pull back. Uh, Apple, this was a position actually I bought, and you can't you know see it here, but I bought sub 630 on Apple and had a good bounce. Uh, got stopped out trailing uh, on this bounce here. It was actually basically a break even, so it was a scratch on the trade. Uh, but I think you continue to look at it. just watch it um, six uh, six thirty uh, I'm sorry six hundred is a potential target on Apple now a pullback to six hundred on Apple the point of control for the year that is where I really think that you can look to be a buyer uh, look to be a buyer on uh, weakness and you'll probably get a really good bounce off of that but right here it could be just a trickle down effect. See if these levels hold. If they do, that's great. If not, uh, 600 is 605 is your target on Apple. Materials. This is breaking down. This looks like it wants to test 35 half. The only reason I say that is because uh, 35 half or so resistance, resistance, resistance. Here, I'll do it like this. Resistance. A little bit of support, a little dip below, and uh, you know, a nice breakout. So, what should we get? We should get some type of support. Okay. Metals and mining. Now, this is. I mean, clearly, we're seeing this underperform here. Um, but your base is down at lower levels. So, you're looking at this at your base here. You're looking at resistance here where I'm looking at this high volume area. I'm not necessarily, I'm looking at price, but I'm looking at volume. And you're seeing price reject from volume. So this is 
kind of your range? Are we going to fill this in? I don't know. What's the most important thing for me is does 40, 50 hold or around the center of that range? You know, right here, right now, I ne wouldn't necessarily want to be uh, long metals and mining from these levels on a pullback shirt. Sure, but right here, right now, you know, I, I would rather try to get it at lower levels. With that said, this week, metals and mining did a lot better than, say, technology. And that's something that you want to be aware of. All right, consumer discretionary kind of look like the S&P just rolling over here. And, you know, here's your trading box, and it's breaking down. This is my target here. So I, I don't think there's any rush on, on trying to get long these names. Wait for the pullback to happen. Wait for it to run its course. And then you can look to start to get long with the bounce. All right, um, consumer staples. Uh, now here, it's a little bit different. Um, we have big volume right here. So what you're looking for, does this consolidation level hold? If it does, then you know you, you want to be long consumer staples. They're working. The pullback here, sure, but it's been on pretty light volume. We've had one a higher than average volume day, and then from there it's been pretty light. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And the last... XLV, healthcare, selling off from the highs, and you could see a, diff, a, a decent pullback. Look at this volume here. That's big consolidation. We're not too far off of that on a percentage basis, about 4%. So realize that, you know, here, wait a second. Here's where we close, and here's where price could go. And... Nothing would be wrong from a volume standpoint. Nothing would be wrong. That would actually be a good opportunity. So this I don't see as a pullback. This is a pullback for healthcare, for example. And I'm just going off volume. I'm just going off a one-year chart because I want to give you the longer-term levels to be watching and kind of operate off of there. Uh, the monthly profiles will give you opportunities, you know, do I continue to hold this month? Should I look to sell? And obviously, like in the NASDAQ, we got a sell signal. Um, in small caps, we got a sell signal. In, let's load it, S&P. In the S&P, just now in the S&P, did we get a sell signal? Uh, we made new highs. Uh, it looks like on Friday. I don't remember if it was Friday. Um, and then just this week, against I'm looking at last week, uh, last month's point of control. We'll just call it that a high volume area. Finally, we broke through that, and the sell on strength that was your selling opportunity. That was our first sign of weakness. So, are we breaking down here? Yes, we are. Are we going to go test last month's point of? I'm sorry, two months ago point of control. We probably are. Uh, so you probably have this much more downside on uh, the S&P, but relative strength, S&P looks better than, say, the NASDAQ. And let me just show you the NASDAQ one, one more time just so you can get the idea. So here's, here's the NASDAQ, and I'm kind of liking this, this drawing tool. So we have our high volume area here. What happens? We trade off of those levels. You notice it's support multiple times. Then the month finishes in September, what happens? Selling opportunity. So we got buying opportunity, buying opportunity, buying opportunity. This was our first major sign of weakness where you just have a, a flat sell-off. There's no, you know, see here how it's a slow grind lower? Let's try this again. This was a slow grind lower. And then a nice, you know, little base and a bounce. This was a pretty hefty sell-off. So off of this point of control, you're going to see smart traders trying to sell into strength. Sure enough, they do that. They break this high volume area immediately. Trades right through it, slices through it. Now we're at the value area low for last month. You just use these as targets, and then you watch price action to see what you should be doing. Look at the point of control for the month. It is a, a wonderful area to trade off of for the next month. 
and you'll find out that you're on the right side of the market eight, nine times out of ten. And if you can just trade accordingly, then you're going to make a ton of money trading. So I hope this helps. It was a broad market, you know, view. And, you know, overall, I, I still think the market's on a sell. We're probably ready for a short-term bounce. But are you going to be a seller into strength? I have to be honest. I think that is the trade right now. And until that changes, and I'll let you know when that changes, uh, we're going to go from there. So have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you on Monday.